Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lamarant Weber. And today we we are going into that place, which is extraordinary because we're with Winfrey, who has brought us Ra. He's brought us the transcriber of Ra. We have gone to um, we have gone through the blowing up of Tiamat, the blowing up of Mars, the how how Earth is not going to be blown up. We have gone to some places that we never go with other in in other shows, but yet are quite real. And today, I guess you would call it. Is this like Winfrey Unplugged? Is that, is that what this is? I I wondered what you were going to call it. I was no <laughs> oh. or, or is this is this like raw group? And the Elohim unplugged. <laughs> well, I think that would be better. You know? <laughs> so, you know, the fact that we we have established communications with these group souls in higher dimensions, and that I have learned how they interface with this realm, and I have learned how to interface with them, and I'm making that available everyone who's listening you can interface with these guys you can feel their energy you can hear their words every day and wait until you hear what happens when people do that okay and alfred i am so glad that you uh, you know this is kind of an, a very uh far out thing to present but it wouldn't be the first time you presented a far out thing <laughs> but I'm so, it's not, it's not, it, it like, it, it's like religion, but through religion, to the other side of religion, and where religion stems from, without the dogma of religion, okay? And I'm going to, I am going to, I prepared myself to make the case, to prove to you people who are listening, that this is real and not only is it real but you can participate in it and be part of it okay it actually i'm here i i i, I see this is why i don't want to use this camera because it's such a camera i want you to hear something every day we do something called whole planet healing and um i hope i saved this here here we go no um, and I get testimonials from people. This is a daily call over a conference call that you can listen to. And during the course of this call, it's not focused on channeling. It's focused on picking up the energies of the higher realms and actually feeling them in a way that opens your chakras and activates your DNA. And without any new age kind of, how shall I say it? New age um, dogma attached to it. So, that's the purpose of my purpose in doing this call, explaining how, how I've proved to myself. And you have to prove it to yourself. I can tell you all the things I've done. And where we are, we're going to show them to you today. But give you the opportunity to prove something to yourself, not to believe it in your mind. Feel it in your gut and feel it ex experientially and learning how you can make a difference in this planetary shift that's taking place right now. And, you know, when I, just to do a quick review of, and, and go into detail, on this on the previous videos I've done with Alfred. 
but a quick review. In 2002, I was in the middle of writing the reincarnation of Edgar Casey. And I had a new girlfriend who spontaneously started to chat. And it happened when we were driving. It's like a joke. It was like we were driving from Los Angeles to Portland, Oregon. And it was pouring rain. And I did a prayer of protection. And at the end of the prayer, I said, does anybody want to talk to me? And like a joke, she answered. And she said, we're here. Do you have questions? And I thought she was joking. But I asked some questions. I don't, I don't remember what I asked. But um, after a few minutes, she said, that's the strangest thing that ever happened to me. So uh, over the next few months, she would tap me on the shoulder and tell me those guys want to talk to you. And I started having questions and answer sessions with this intelligence that said they were the council of Elohim. And when I Googled the word Elohim, I found it to be one of the names for God in the Old Testament. Name the more Mormons for God, and the creators of the universe. Now, you know, I come from a background of being a physics major, and this was really hard to believe, that my girlfriend is tapping me on my shoulder, and I'm, I'm talking and communicating to this intelligence that tells me they created the universe. It sounds like a sci-fi story. And it felt like a sci-fi story. And I said to myself, if this is true, it's got to prove itself to me. I can't believe they are who they are just because they use a certain name. And um, so one of the first instances that they, I was talking to somebody special was that incident with my sister where she was going into the hospital for a serious operation and um, I asked them if they could help and they said they would. She was not supposed to live and she survived a serious cancer operation and I said, well, maybe it was coincidence, maybe they did it, what do I know? But in any case, um, Three weeks later, I got a call from my brother-in-law, and he said something really strange happened. Joanne was uh, going in for tests, and the nurse said, there's no cancer, but there's something wrong with your test. And so they told her, they told him that her lupus had disappeared, and lupus never goes away. So of course, I went back and I asked them in a channeling, I said, how did you do that? And they said, well, we projected a filter into her blood and we took the lupus out. Now this was the very, very first time that I had the idea they could project energy from where they were into where we are. And that not only could they project energy, but they could make it in a way that something rearranged on a molecular level. Now that is an incredible premise to me. I'm talking to this invisible voice and they're making my sister's lupus go away. It was the first incident. So um, I didn't know what to do with this at the time. And I said, well, I'll just keep asking questions and I'll see where it goes. 
I'll figure out how it's supposed, to, if it's supposed to go into the world, how it's supposed to go into the world. So um, over time, there were numerous instance, instances where they have demonstrated their ability to project energy into this realm. And they can do it in a way that other people can feel it. That's what's incredible. It's not invisible. It's, it's not, you don't have to be psychic. The, 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 this huge energy comes into a room and it overwhelms the people in the, in the room. I had a, let's see here, very interesting testimonial. Well, early on, before any of this was happening, I asked them a question. And I said, how can an individual have some kind of personal experience that they are really having a connection with an interdimensional source such as the Elohim? What are the physical signals and evidence that would confirm that they're having a connection? And this was their answer. There can be a light appearing to the individual, surrounding and providing a loving space around the individual. It's a love light surrounding the individual, which the individual can sense. That is one of the first signs of connection. Secondly, if a person is directed to the light, an answer may form as if a thought in the seeker of the asker. One must use discernment in accepting answers. If an answer does not fit your question or fit your recognition of what is right, you may have been contacted by a negative source which has intercepted the connection line. Do not ever pursue this, but reset and connect to the Elohim source or the Ra source. The thought will have a resonance within you of correctness. Do not accept an answer unless it resonates as a correct and informative answer. Okay, now, that was their answer. There can be a light appearing now, some of you, as you listen to this broadcast, as we go through it, some of you are going to feel those energies right on this broadcast. Because as I have learned, the Elohim are using me, and they'll use other people as well, but I know they're using me to be like a rebroadcasting station. And when I talk about them, they show up and people feel energy, okay? And I don't even have to tell them this is going to happen. It's like, it's kind of in between my words. And it's an amazing phenomena that I'm an observer of just as you are. And um, there is, I'll give you an example. I did a workshop some years ago, and somebody sent me this testimonial that was sitting in the workshop. This was in Los Angeles. I didn't want the workshop to end. I didn't want you to stop sharing information. I remained in an altered state of incredible peace and bliss for quite a while afterwards. I don't recall ever feeling that way during this lifetime. I want you to hear the impact that this is having on people when they feel those energies. One of the things I remember when I first started doing this was I had a lot of concern. Well, how do I know I trust these guys? How do I know it's not the Anunnaki 
or reptilians that are using me. And Terry, my partner who does the channeling, asked the same thing. It took us like a few years of, let me just see here, a few years of um, asking questions, getting to know them, getting the experience of them before we believed we were doing it, really that they were who they say they were. And um, it's culminated in something that I call whole planet healing. It's something we do every day of the week at 7 p.m. It doesn't cost any money. You just have to pick up the phone. And I've gotten facile enough at this that almost, almost every night we bring in their energies. And there's a group of people that have been coming over and over again who have all gotten into this incredible sense of loving community. It's amazing to watch it. And I'm not doing it. I'm just showing up. I'm, I am talking. I am doing it. And I'm not doing it. They show up in the right times and people feel them. And it, it like lifts your vibration from this realm. Here's a testimonial from somebody who has been coming to Whole Planet Healing. It's a lady named Jennifer in Pennsylvania. Um, Whole Planet Healing is astounding. We have, wonderful, we have a wonderful group assembled. It's amazing how we hit the ground running. It takes almost no time to bring our sources in. I can feel them with, it, with us. This is the most amazing thing I have ever been involved with. I didn't even know this was even possible. This has made a huge difference in my life. And I want to thank you and Terry for everything you do for the group. We are learning with your leadership how to bring these energies into our life for our betterment. I don't know how you do it night after night, but I find myself waiting for 10 p.m. every night. It's actually 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. The greetings we give each other are so uplifting, it warms my soul. I've looked for this my entire life. Uh, just participating in this call has lifted me. Thank you for all you're doing. That is whole planet healing. And that's what happens when people connect with these sources. And I really didn't want to do something every night. Um, I don't like commitments. Into my entire life, I've been very good at dodging commitments. But I knew this was real. And the format is where every night we read a little excerpt from one of my conversations with him. Or Jim McCarty, if you're familiar with the Ra Law of One material, Jim McCarty is one of the original people who brought that in. His wife was Carla Rucker. And on Mondays and Thursdays, he comes in and reads excerpts from his material. And these two group souls that we'll talk a little bit more about shortly are on the line with us. And then after we read these things, we do a guided visualization, ascending energy all over our planet. So let me go back to proving that these guys, the Elohim guys, can send energy into this realm. And I prepared a few pictures that blew my mind as it was coming about. And Alfred has them. Let me see if I can find them here. See uh, when your, your, your camera has um, your... I screwed we, up with my camera? No, uh, we, we've got a lot of headroom above you. If you could, sure you could bring your... If you could bring your camera down just a bit. There you go. You're back in the center again. Okay. 
See, this I wanted to use my other camera because I'm using my computer camera. Yeah. I've got to remember not to move my computer. Okay. Now, I've got to find. I thought I left this open. Hang on a second. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know when when you want to run the PowerPoint. You know, I'm just getting prepared for it here. I'm trying to. Rem I'm, I have a page here where I put the PowerPoint. Uh, okay. I'll tell you what. Hang on, hang on. Okay, guys, I should tell jokes now. You know, I'm doing, I'm looking for this. I had it set up. All right, Alfred, I'll tell you what, rather than find it, I'll just get you to help me, okay? And um, we have some very phenomenal pictures here that started out fairly early in my relationship with the Elohim source. And the very first time was when a woman asked me for a promo picture where I was not wearing glasses. Okay, so I, I'm i gonna go to share screen now. You should have that picture, correct? Yeah, yeah, hold, just hold your horses. We're going to a whole thing here. And uh, so this is the Elohim and whole planet healing with Winfrey. And this is the first one. OK. So Terry took that picture, and I looked at it. And this was, this was at least 10 to 12 years ago, I think. I looked at it, and I said, I don't like my expression. Let's take another picture. And then I said, we have a little invocation to call the Elohim in. And so why don't I do the invocation, and maybe I will look better. Um, next picture. So I did it. I took another picture. I quickly looked at it and I said, nope, I don't like it any better. And then we went on with the day and I forgot. And then a week later, I took a look at the second picture and uh, both pictures actually. And I noted that there was this pink glow all over my chest. And then I did a channeling. I should, guess, should I uh, change the... Uh, yeah, you can change it now. Thank you. Yeah, let me just do that. There we go. Okay. So you see, over my chest, all the way down to my stomach, it's all you know, pinkish. And, um, you know, I said, could that be the camera? But I was in the same position as the previous picture where that wasn't there. And when I asked them, I said, could you explain the pink glow in that picture? And they said that when their energy, now keep in mind, the universe is a hologram. The universe goes through dimensions that go all the way from one focal point, which you could call source, to in our realm. And at the higher realms, beings are pure energy, and they all totally know everything about each other. There's nothing hidden. It's all there. And they're, they're totally aware that they're part of each other. As everything gets thicker and more dense in this realm, beings start to separate, forget that they're part of each other. And it becomes competitive, jealous, inquisitive, all the things that we are all too familiar with 
about the way this realm is screwed up. Now, the higher realms are still operating. We all have a potential connection. It's kind of like there's a thread that goes right up from the top of our heads, potentially back to source. And most of us don't experience that. You know, every night when we do whole planet healing, if you're familiar with the crown chakra, people feel activation around their crown chakra. And we might even end up feeling it on this call we're doing right now. We'll see where it goes. Um, Alfred holds a really great energy to do this. And uh, I, can't, I can't do it by myself. It takes more people to make a group energy, to make that energy go up into the higher realms. So when your energy moves up that pathway into the higher realms, and you're in a group where other people's energy is doing the same thing, the energies start to coalesce and blend. And something magical happens. You feel connected with people. And you don't even know them. You never talk to them. Our normal ways of feeling connected are inoperative. We're connecting in a, in a new way. So this is the Elohim with pink all over me the first time this happened. And then, let me see, there's another picture there. I hope it's the next one where, where two guys are sitting in a backyard in Hollywood. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I was asked to give a talk in Hollywood at the home of this Dr. James Julian, who is the gentleman on the left, and his friend. And for some reason, I took a picture of them sitting in this chair. And five minutes later, I was sitting on the left and James had left. And when I looked at the picture, I was shrouded in pink. Go ahead, there we go. And I mean, I have the both pictures so you can see it's just not an anomaly of the camera. It was me and they were surrounding me. And what happens is I don't I don't see that in person. I only see, I've only seen it on film, but I have experienced seeing in person energy that is in the space around me that other people are feeling and getting uplifted by. Now, the point I am making is these sources have the ability to project energy into this realm. They have the ability to cause miracles to happen. They have a criteria for that. And they, they operate for the highest good of all concerned and they don't violate free will. For example, one time I asked them, why don't you just knock out all these Illuminati reptilian guys so we can have a peaceful place to live in? And they said, first of all, that if they did that, they would just come back in some future world and do the same thing. That, um, it wouldn't change anything except momentary, momentary kind of relief. But it would also violate free will. And within their context, they don't violate free will. They, they have to get the accordance of whoever they are working with to agree to something. And I'll be sharing with you some of the miracles we've had with whole planet healing that it's just spectacular to watch it. You know, everyone wonders, what do we do in this world? We seem so helpless. Damn, you know, the reptilians are running this and who knows who's running that. And it's hard to know what's up from down. Suddenly, there's an easy thing to do, which is show up on a conference call and just 
hold, add, contribute your energy to the group energy. I asked them, when I noticed some of the ways that they could manipulate reality, I asked them, could you stop a nuclear weapon from going off? And they said they could if enough people asked. And every night, we just have a small group. This is the very first time I've ever gone public inviting people to this. And it's a little scary because we've had our little friendly niche and everybody knows each other. And I'm afraid when Alfred puts this up, maybe nobody will show up. I don't know, but I got a feeling lots of people will show up. And we're no longer anonymous anymore. Yes, Alfred. Uh, when can, can you hear me? Yeah. So, so how, when do these calls occur and how can people participate? Well, I can tell you the easiest thing to remember right now is wholeplanethealing.com. Wholeplanethealing.com. And it's got a phone number on it. And just dial the phone number and the access code at 7 p.m. Um, Pacific time, 8 p.m. Mountain, 9 p.m. Central. Wait a second. We got it. Yes, yeah, right. And then 10 p.m. Eastern. Let's pick it up and listen. And, you you know, um, and just hang in there. I suggest you come in more than once, at least a few times, and see if you get into the resonance of it and feel the energies of it. Um, what we do is we're creating a group energy. And we can then move that group energy to different places on the planet. Some of you may remember the Maharishi used to do meditations and go from town to town and, and have an assembly of people who were doing his meditations. And there were studies done that indicated that when there was a meditation taking place, the crime rate would drop in the city. Well, we're doing something of that nature. But the one difference we're doing is and we can create a group energy. But to create a group energy and have the Elohim and Ra participating in that energy, it's kind of like maybe we have 50 people on the call and we have half a million of those guys on the call helping the energy so we can do things that are huge potentially. And we're limited still by the number of people on the call. And the more people on the call, the more that will happen. And, you know, one epic time, we've had a number of epic times, but one epic, epic time was when we were doing uh, one of these healing calls and Hurricane Gustav was barreling towards New Orleans. And the news reports were saying that it was going to hit the same as Hurricane Katrina, which, if you recall, did just about destroyed the city. So we put Hurricane Gustav in the light. That's the terminology that we use. We put Hurricane Gustav in the light, and Terry, who was on the call, something very unusual happened. The Elohim started talking to the hurricane, and Terry was like saying what they were saying. Never happened before or since. And essentially, they were explaining the hurricane had its a consciousness, 
and it had its own free will. And they were kind of saying, look, Hurricane, look at all the people praying. Look at all the people that you could help. And first the hurricane was saying, hey, I'm big and tough. We take no prisoners. <laughs> and then after a few minutes of them talking, they said, okay, Hurricane Gustav agreed to let us divide its energy and we're going to put some of it in Sedona and some of it in Mount Shasta because we had some, Terry and I were in Sedona and someone else was in Mount Shasta. And then they said it wasn't going to be a problem. And I was thinking to myself, can I really trust this? <laughs> Am I going to lose all my credibility <laughs> after they say it's not going to be a problem? So I said, well, I'll bite my tongue. And we went on, and uh, at the end of the call, I looked up Hurricane Gustav on the Internet. And there were all these reports indicating that it mysteriously dropped from level four to level three. And I believe by the time it hit New Orleans, it was level two. And that next week, even George Norrie had somebody saying, we don't understand why it dropped. All the indications were that it should have gone off. And I later asked them the question, because my mind was kind of blowing on the fact that that happened. And I said, you mean if we didn't do that, it would have hit full force? And they said, yes. Now, you know, if it wasn't for all these other things, I'd say, how do you know you could believe them? But they have proven to me, without a shadow of a doubt, that they can do things like this. They don't do them on, on call. They don't do it every night. Like every night, we do the ring of fire. And you can't take credit for things that aren't happening. Plus, I prefer not to take credit for it. I don't really want credit, but I got a feeling that what we're doing is changing energy patterns, which cause things that could be disasters not to happen as bad as they could. And they're very transparent. Sometimes we talk to them um, and they tell us how it works. Let's see, I, 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 I took some excerpts of some things that I was gonna share here. This is, just, I'll just read a little bit of this, okay? This was um, a call we did about hurricanes and they were talking about how prayer works with hurricanes. Now, let me just get up to here. Um, uh, hang on, almost there, I think. There it is, okay. This is when, as a hurricane forms itself, there's an awareness and an ability to create intention and the ability to make choices, which is hard to understand. But we're going to try to understand this a little better after we do this session. And so then we do an invocation for protection and, um, and they said, yes, we are of the division of the Elohim and of the Ra group. And we come together to meet with you and to communicate with you this 10th day of September, 2017. We, give us a moment. We are a consciousness, a collective consciousness between these groups. And we come to work with you. If we ever say anything that does not make sense, then disregard it. It is not meant for you at this time. We are conscious of the polarization of the people of Florida 
and the people who are in the path of Hurricane Irma. We see that it is a combined consciousness or collective consciousness that is very concerned about this hurricane. Many, many millions of people have left their homes and are seeking to evade the winds and the hurricane. The vast majority of the circling energies are moving up the east coast of the US, the west coast of Florida at this time. We see the widespread winds. We see the energy of the circling vortex that creates a consciousness. When there is a spinning vortex energy within the fluid plasma energy of the circling energies, it brings an awareness forth within the total sum of the energies. This awareness is a rudimentary consciousness and be, can be communicated to it. We're talking about the consciousness of a hurricane. Depending upon the clarity of the connection and the clarity of the consciousness, um, that is being created. It is complex. It is some, to some degree subject to the collective consciousness, energy, thoughts, and ideas of humans concerning the storm. The more people that pray, the more it can change the collective consciousness. And it can bring about a change in the consciousness of the storm. If one polarizes, be in opposition with the storm, the storm polarizes with the people and does the expected with the resultant damage as a resultant effect of the polarization. This storm, for a while, was drunk on its own power of circling and creating winds and was somewhat conscious of the effects it was causing as it went over the Caribbean. There have been collective attempts to send a healing energy to the strong winds and to moderate and to lessen um, the strength of the hurricane, which has affected this hurricane, Irma, as it has lessened in strength from the five. It tends, when out of the influence of those prayers, to regain strength. We are seeing that the hurricane is weaker than it was in the Caribbean, and it is even some visual perspectives the hurricane does as it is moving over the land with its misty result of the flying water particles and wind. We see that when it goes over land, it loses its uptake of moisture from the warm water and loses to some degree the wind speed around its eye. It loses the moisture particles that are formed when it is no longer over the water, uptaking the moisture from the surface. Now, I don't even actually remember Hurricane Irma, and this was just in my archives of something that um, we channeled, where they're explaining to us how prayer uh, works with a hurricane. Now, I don't even like to use the word prayer, because it sounds like religion, and it's more than that. Prayer is the intention of a person that's very strong that penetrates the veil. We all have the ability to create intentions. We all have the ability to create group intentions. And people do try to manipulate reality through their intentions. Now, the difference between intentions and prayer is that prayer is intentions for the highest good of all concerned. Both the negative and the positive can have intentions. Like we have satanic circles, we have witches' covens. Not to mean that all witches are negative, but you know, witches oftentimes don't ask for the highest good of all concerned. They just want something to happen for someone else. As soon as it's for the highest good of all concerned, that means if this comes about, nobody will lose. You can then engender the higher forces to add to your intentions. And the Elohim described it very well. They said, think of riding a bicycle. When you ride a bicycle, 
the energy transfers from the sprocket to the rear wheel. And that a bicycle moves faster than someone who's just walking. And the Elohim explained that they were like the sprocket and the rear wheel. They could take an intention and amplify it many fold as long as it was for the highest good of all concerned, as long as it was honoring free will. And if it was an intention that was designed to control and manipulate something, then they would pass. So you can see how a source like the Elohim could be interpreted as God because they answer, they add to our intentions. And, um, and then we watch that occur and every so often somebody has a miracle on, on our line and somebody has a miracle of healing on our line. And I'm just sitting watching it and I'm watching it long enough that I know it's true. I wanted to share a story of the very first time we ever used group intentions for making, trying to make a shift. And it had to do, I think in 2006, maybe 2005, I was on a TV show in New York with Daphne and we were staying at her mother's house in Cape Cod. And we drove down to New York. And then we were staying in a motel in Brooklyn. And we were doing a channeling. And I said, while we're in New York, would it be a good idea to go to the World Trade Center towers and, uh, and call in the light, bring in the energy of our sources to balance things. Now there's a, there's a couple of pictures of that, Alfred. There's a picture of Daphne standing in front of a mirror or something. Right, let me just go there. Go there, is it? Yeah. So, so we went to the World Trade Center and we stood in front of it and we could not get the energy to come in. It was like dead. So we went back to the motel. Now we had already started doing conference calls, but we never started doing group energy experiments. But um, I asked our sources in a channeling, would it be a good idea to go back to the World Trade Center while we were on a conference call? And would that help us bring the energy in to move the energy over that? And they said, yes, that would be a good idea. So I called everybody up. We had maybe 15 people coming into conference calls at the time. And we went to the World Trade Center. And it was like we weren't there. It was like fun. And the energy just rolled out. And I had asked them, would it be good to go any other place else? And they said, well, we suggest go to the United Nations, go across the Brooklyn Bridge, and look at the Statue of Liberty. So we had this, this um, group of people on the phone while I'm driving through New York City, totally spaced out. <laughs> I mean, it was not like I was in New York City. And um, it was pouring rain. Now, Terry, who is my other person who was channeling the Elohim was in Los Angeles and she was on that call. And she was saying she was flying with the Elohim and she was looking down at the city and she could see the rain and she could see the energy shifting. And um, one of the interesting things was that uh, they told me 
whatever I do while I was in New York City, don't let Daphne out of your sight. She can't handle the energy of the city and anything could happen to her. And so I followed that until one moment. And we were having to leave to back to Cape Cod. And I didn't know what bridge to take. And I decided to stop at a Starbucks and it was pouring rain and I was gonna get my computer out, and look at Google Maps, and see how to get out of Dodge. And so I dropped Daphne off, parked the car, came back. Okay, I get teary-eyed when I tell this story. When I walked into Starbucks, somebody got up from another table and threw coffee. Not coffee, something cold. It wasn't coffee. Threw their drink in Daphne's face. And I mean, she wasn't hurt, but I re it was like, what I learned was there are huge negative forces that do not want this to be done. Do not want whole planet healing to take place. Do not want consciousness to shift. And they pay attention to me. They probably pay attention to Alfred and, and lots of people who are purely operating for shift. And they can take over the body of somebody who's spacey or drinking and make them hit your car or, or something like that. You have to be very diligent, diligent to do this work. And, um, and that was the first time we ever did a healing session with a group over a conference call. And then Daphne and I were driving across the country and we went to Philadelphia. And we started driving through downtown Philadelphia and, um, and, and, and calling in the light and bringing in raise, And we had a group on the phone while we were doing it. And Alfred, I think you have a picture of there of me driving through downtown Philadelphia. Yeah, let me, let me just, uh, now here's, before we go there, here's another one with Daphne. Could you tell us what, what's happening there? Let me see what it is. It says another in front of the World Trade Center. Well, I think it was just the pictures we were taking. I see. Yeah, that's it. I see it. That's a little, she's in front of the World Trade Center. You can see her on the phone, on the conference call. And uh, I was taking the picture. And that was a plaque that said, uh, dedicated to the World Trade Center. You know? And I'm not so sure if people knew that it was a false flag at that time. It may have come in later. Yeah, but that's that's Daphne on the phone in front of the World Trade Center. And then I think the next picture is driving through downtown Philadelphia. Yes. That's Philadelphia, right? Now that's just driving through Philadelphia, nothing special. That's Independence Hall in the background. There's the one. That's just a few minutes later. We were driving through the city streets and I took that picture and you can see it's like the, the the buildings are drenched in pink one time when i was doing a channeling with terry and i asked them a question this was early on i said do you guys show up in orbs and they said no the Ra group shows up in orbs our orb is so big, it goes from the earth to the sky. That's what they said. And, uh, and that may be a picture of one of their orbs. And uh, if, if I think there's a picture coming up, we're gonna say, see what the next picture is. Okay, this is a screenshot of a guy who was coming into our conference calls some time ago. And he said, I remember he sent me an email. I was on the call and I could feel my energy expand so big. It was like it was going for miles around. 
And while I was having this experience, I was listening to your call on real player. Now that's a picture of real player, a black real player. And he said, while he was watching, the real player turned to pink. And then he sent a picture of the pink real player. Go ahead, Albert, move it to the next one. See if that, see if we got it right. Oh, go, go backwards. Go be backwards before that. All right, I screwed up. There's no pink real player, but I have a picture of a pink real player. No, no, no. Here we 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 have the 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 black real player and the pink real player. Oh, next, pink is, is, is next to it. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is a separate picture. Yeah. Okay. There's the pink real player, and uh, um. And then another time, I was giving a talk in Los Angeles at the Conscious Life Expo. And there was this huge blue orb on my elbow. And did a channeling about it afterwards. And they said that was a member of the Ra group who had come to hang out during my talk. Okay. <laughs> So, so, so um, <clears throat> I mean, they said that previously. They said the Ra group comes in orbs. We come in huge things like you just saw over Philadelphia. So I'm, t I'm, I'm, I'm just encouraging, encouraging everybody. This is something you can show up on my call. I can't promise everyone is going to experience it. But so many people do. Sometimes you have to release some of your trauma and some of your contraction to feel the energy. The first time, um, there's a story I've told many times, where in 2004, when the reincarnation of Edgar Cayce had come out. And keep in mind, all the time I was writing this book, I was sitting around talking to the Elohim through both Daphne and Terry getting this most incredible information. And um, I was giving a talk on the book in San Diego. And when I was giving it, um, I could see this energy in the room. Now, it wasn't pink. It was just kind of white, white energy. And it was like descending down from the top in the room, and I could see it, and it was moving around people, actually moving, dancing over people's heads. And when my talk was over, Terry was outside, and she was selling books, The Reincarnation of Edgar Casey, And the people were running out of the room saying, wow, I could see auras in the room. I could see energy in the room. I could see light in the room. I never saw that before. And so Terry asked me, what was, what, what, what was going on in the room? And I said, um, well, I was just giving a talk. And later we did a channeling. And I said, could you explain the energy that was in the room? And they said, that was us. We were helping you. Now, this was extraordinary for me. I mean, here I've been spending two years talking to them. They're answering my wildest questions. You know, we put up everything for free. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of my conversations with them. We have uh, a book I give away for free at intelligent-infinity.com of my early conversations with them. We do whole planet healings for free every night. And it's not because I don't like money. It's because I don't know how to charge for this. It's too big. You have to check it out. You have to prove it to yourself that it works and that it works for you. But it's certainly worth checking out and seeing what happens. 
You know, it's very hard to explain this because it is not linear. It is not, it's like bigger than your normal experience. And um, so you don't have, it's like trying to tell a blind man what it's like to see. You can't do it until he has a reference point. The Elohim are not God in the way we normally think of God. When I asked them I, I, if they liked to be worshipped, they said no. Here's what they said. It is irksome to be worshipped because worship creates a division. I'm better. You're the one who's not as good. It creates a falsehood, a fallacy, and it creates a break in the communication between the two. There's a father and a son, and the neither is better than the other. One is wiser, one knows more. Worship tends to deaden the brain and to place one at a disadvantage. It tends to close down the channel of communication and say, you tell me everything. You tell me what to do. I will follow you. I will do what you say. This is not the kind of connection we are looking for. We are looking for the type of connection where there is mutual respect and equality. And, you know, basically, if you look at it from their point of view, which I, I've talked to them enough that I tend to see their point of view, it is as if they were the originators of creating the physical universe. They did it with energy, they did it with frequencies. We've had loads of conversations with them about how they did it and how it was put together. And they, didn't, they gave everything free will. So after the initial template was set, a lot of things happened spontaneously as a result of free will choices. And a lot of those free will choices have led us to the world we're in right now. And they see the pain and suffering that goes on today. And they want to make a difference, but they don't want to impose on our free will. They, don't, they, they can't just wave a magic wand and say, everything change. Everyone has money, everyone this. But they do have their abilities to energetically connect, to increase synchronicities, to do healings sometimes, and to keep us motivated with a higher truth, which is a very important factor on this planet right now, because there are so many variables, and if we, if we don't keep above all of those things, then we can't create the consciousness to shift them. So that's why I do whole planet healing. And, you know, we have maybe 50 people on it. I need 5 million people on it. If this made any sense to you, uh, any resonance, then I just hope you will show up. And I'm sure Alfred will have the website, wholeplanethealing.com, and um, my other website, intelligent-infinity.com, where you can get the whole free download of the book that tells my original story of connecting with the Elohim and how they answered my original questions. Originally, I said, well, if they really are who they say they are, let me ask them, how does prayer work? How do miracles happen? What happens when you die? We have covered every one of these topics so extensively that would blow you away, and it's all available. So, Alfred, anything you'd like to say? Or... Well, yeah, first, just the detail. Could, could you, like, pull your screen down just a bit? Because we're just seeing the top of your head. There you go. I'm sorry. Now, I, I know that this is like, it could, people could say, no, this is projection. But I remember when, when, 
we first got involved with with broadcasting this and it got pretty heavy because at that time you began to think of bringing in and sharing the information about Tiamat and that is where that Tiamat was an enormous earth-like human planet uh, that was destroyed in a nuclear war uh, a, um, a human uh, reptilian nu nuclear war about seven hundred about 700,000 years ago is now the asteroid belt and 2 billion souls from Tiamat were caught in this consciousness ball for about 100,000 years and finally they are incarnating now on earth and are earth humans and kind of working out all their trauma here. Secondly, there was a, uh, a Mars nuclear war which we know about which there's confirmation because now the mars rovers have found uh uh the same sort of uh, uh traces of nuclear explosions that accompany hydrogen bombs they found that on the uh radioactive isotopes on the surface of mars so that tends to confirm and is congruent with what the, what the Ra group have said in the Law of One that, hey, we, there was a nuclear explosion on nuclear war on, Mar, on, on Tiamat that destroyed it. There was a nuclear war on Mars, a reptilian human nuclear war on Mars that made it, went from a verdant planet like Earth uh, to a, uh, an obloid pumpkin-like planet uh, with no surface vegetation, very thinned atmosphere, and reptilians on the surface and humans uh, under the surface. And uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, references that we can take people uh, to prove all of that at uh, the Mars Anomaly Research Society, Mars. You can go to exopolitics.com and see a lot of the work of the early Mars uh, Society, and you can go to the Mars, uh, Mars Anomaly Research Society group on Facebook and see their work, and their annual meeting is coming up in September in Silver City, New Mexico. So, uh, so now we're back to Earth, and the big question was, only three or four months ago, or six to four months ago, are they going to get a nuclear trifecta? That is, are the same incarnates or the same process of reptilian wars going to, in this solar system, be successful in having a nuclear war that blows up Tiamat, that then blows up Mars or destroys the verdant planet, and then come back to Earth and we're sort of thrown back against Earth? And I have to say this. Okay, and there are many positive causes. I'm sure that uh, the U.S. President uh, Trump and uh, the North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un will say, hey, look, we got together and we saved Earth. However, it was at the same time that you and we and the Ra Group and the Elohim were doing whole planet healing every night. So you can actually get up and claim some credit, can't you? I don't want any credit, okay? No, no, it's not that you don't want credit. Look, I'm trying to say you're trying to get people in here. It doesn't matter what you want. Well, well you know I, I, I'm trying to be effective here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Look, 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 look. You either want 5 million people in there or you want to say, Chucks, I'm not doing anything. You either, you know, uh, uh, Mark Twain wrote about people, oh, come on and paint my fence white. You know, I mean, like, own up to it. Do you want the planet meditating to change things or not? Absolutely. Forget about credit. Yeah, so say that in the last six months, which is what I would say, because I think it's true, it wasn't all these peace conferences, although that's fun. What set the basic conditions is 
these interdimensional groups aided by the humans that are meditating that are helping lift the vibe along with the cyclical uh, effect of the ascending energies in the holographic universe that we're in. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. You know, when I, when I was writing The Reincarnation of Edgar Casey, and Wilcock was so resisting being Casey. So, I mean... Look, I, I, I've got to tell you, though, before you go into that and get everybody into like a... Uh, 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 David Wilcock, on May 18th, 2018, on his website, Divine Cosmos, came out with a long panegyric to his to his new yin yang couplehood and in there he went at length acknowledging that he believes he is an incarnate of the Edgar Casey consciousness and how it really and ha and, and he showed how it's how this marriage is an evolution of the Edgar Casey marriage because apparently Casey had a very difficult marriage so there's no reason to bring that old energy back because David Wilcock has sort of brought it forward. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I wasn't, I was bringing it back because there was something that they told David uh, that was in the book that just shocked me that they said that. And they said, David, now when I say this, I'm not putting David down, I'm not accusing David of ego, just saying what they said. They said, David, get your ego out of the way. We can stop disasters on your planet. Let our messages come through. That's how important there, this is. And I took that to heart. And that I imagine that is why they started communicating with me. Okay? And, and and that was probably concurrent when David made his career move to, with one Jerker Risavi over at, who's a Satan and Satanic Luciferic. I mean, that's a pretty heavy indictment. Right. Running a place called Gaia.com. Wasn't it you who told me that Jerka actually lent him his car? Is, is that true? I would not admit to that, okay? Okay. <laughs> but... Um, in any case, you know, it can be such a struggle in this realm. I know, because I have struggles. I and mean, we, we do all this stuff for free, and, and I stick to my guns. And, um, you know, I know there's ways I could be making money off of it, making people codependent on me, and I don't do it. And I want it to be available to people, regardless of money, okay? Money, I can, I can see why Jesus said it was easier to get a rich man through, let's see, how does it go? A rich man through the... No, 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 it's, a ca it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter, enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and you know, I understand that, and this is nothing against rich people. The problem is, is people that have money, I would say it's attached, it's not money, it's attachment to money. Money is a tool, but so many people that do have money become attached to it. They don't want people to know they have it. They're afraid of getting it ripped off. They want, you know, whatever. But in any case, well, well, the, the the from an exopolitical standpoint, money along with government and religion are Anunnaki control and colonizing tools that were brought here when the Anunnaki intervened unlawfully to occupy the planet. And money is an Orion control true control mechanism mm -hmm. because advanced planets do not have money. Okay. I know that. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Now okay. your you've your screen has migrated again. If you could. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, there were many things I could go on and on about this topic. I put together all kinds of material, 
um, little excerpts from the Elohim. And this is a very, it's very fascinating to study them. I mean, you know, I'll tell you something they said. I asked them, I said, when was the last time someone in this realm did something like what I'm doing, okay? Now, I am unusual because I'm, I'm pretty intelligent. I have a background, scientific background. I'm an artist. I am a good speaker. And I'm skeptical. I don't believe in things in faith. And here I am, totally committed to putting this into the world. So I asked them. And plus, there were a huge amount of synchronicities that brought me into doing this. Chance meetings, which I've talked about on some of the other calls we've done. I mean, it started out with me writing a poem about selling sunglasses. If I didn't write that poem, nothing else would have happened, you know. But um, it's like, I asked them, when was the last time something like this happened in this realm? And they told me, 25 million years ago. 25 million years ago. Now, I don't get any credit except for being pug-nosed and not letting go of this tail of the tiger that I grabbed hold of at one point until I figured it out because I didn't believe it at first. It was like a fantasy. And here I was, it's like, um, I've got a kite string going up to the Elohim. I show up, they work through me, they radiate into the realm. And I just want everyone who's listening to this call to check out Whole Planet Healing, okay? Please, and if you like it, tell other people about it. We are creating a group consciousness. Consciousness changes things in 3D. We are creating that consciousness on the call and things are changing. And we have, it's leveraging because we have a small amount of people on the call leveraging a huge amount of Elohim and Ra souls on the other side, and maybe other angelic beings on the other side, I'm sure. It's a free for all, as long as they're for the highest good of all concerned and honoring free will, they are welcome. And, um, when you come in to the beginning of the call, now I didn't do anything to make this happen. I just, I blow myself away. Somebody comes on the call and says, hi, this is Antonio. It's only 10 people are saying, hi Antonio, it's nice to hear you. It's like, it's friendly, it's warm. Antonio feels accepted. And then somebody else new comes on now, if we get too many people, this is, I don't know, this is going to have to change. You can't do it with everybody. But it's beautiful to watch it because, you know, one of the things that my sources talk about are beings that come in from higher dimensions that have come into this realm to lift the vibration here. But once they're here, they don't remember why they're here. And these are the kinds of people that are the misfits, the alienated ones, the ones that can't fit in. And they're running around saying, I remember when I was in college, I used to walk around look at all the bulletin boards. I said, there's something I'm going to find one day on one of these bulletin boards because I don't know what I'm doing here. And so many of you are those people. And it's like, because you come in from the higher realms, you listen and you hear the Elohim or the Ra groups, it's like, bingo! Your soul knows you're connected. And it's what you've been looking for. It's like I read that testimonial earlier. I've been looking for this all my life and I didn't even know could exist. So I have made it so easy for you to pick up the phone anywhere. 
I know we don't have them broadcast internationally yet, but sooner or later I'm going to put them on YouTube and broadcast the whole time of Healing Flows on YouTube. But if you're international, you can get a Skype account, and for very little money, you can tune in. Every day, if you feel like you're up against the wall, if you feel like, and a lot of people do, they're up against the wall, they're reading the news, oh my God, what's going on? There's a group of crazy, happy people meeting at seven o'clock, giggling, telling jokes, and saving the planet. You owe it to yourself to check it out. And even when you feel resistant, you say, ah, no, no, nobody's gonna like me. Try it anyway. What happens is the energy gets loose on the call. If you notice, if you stayed on this call we're doing here with Alfred, that there's been an alchemy that's happened right on this call. And I think this is the first time we've had this kind of alchemy and the energy has shifted. And when the energy shifts, time moves faster. Another indication that energy is shifting is if I shut up, I don't say anything, you can feel energy in the space. Try it. In that space are the group souls and in all of the souls of all of you, we are making an amalgamation of energy and um, that is the magic that can happen in this realm. And if enough people do it, the realm will shift. What else, Alfred? Yeah, you know, I, I, um, well, I, I've been a witness to this on multiple tracks because I've been following along and I followed the peaks and the valleys and all the different, you know, starting out and with Terry, who I hope is, is really uh, in a recovery period because I understand that she's had some targeting herself and want to bring some light there. Uh, but I do believe that you can claim that whole planet healing over the last year to two year year or six months has brought this planet out of out of a nuclear weapons emergency into a light now there's the whole theater there's a whole geopolitical theater you know of arms and arms control and threat and counter threat and disarmament however underneath that there is the vibratory field of what the universe governance and higher authority is going to allow and not going to allow because nuclear weapons as we know from multiple communications in in exopolitics can destroy whole cities in uh parallel dimensions which are just in the next dimension over from earth and that's why there was all that universe attention that came down on earth when the united states uh through nefarious means through the cover-up of the perpendicular universe by the manhattan project scientists who did so on purpose uh developed nuclear weaponry as a result of covering up uh, the perpendicular universes and and saying that oh we have to go into and bring nuclear weaponry or in other words planetary destruction or in other words going against the will of uh, the omniverse or creative source which is not to destroy planets but to sustain life and to move into unity consciousness and not into duality consciousness, which is what Oppenheimer, Eisen, uh, uh, Einstein, and that group of Anunnaki uh, reptilian hybrids, uh, you know, brought into Earth that we're now pushing out. 
anyway, that's kind of my observation because I'm I tend to uh, articulate more forcefully because I'm not involved, obviously, as you are on a daily 24-7 nightly basis. I just come in and observe. So do you have any response to what I just said? Well, I want to say that you are doing such a brave role in your work that <laughs> I wouldn't want to be you, but I know you love being you, but <laughs> you bring forth fearlessly whatever you feel is in the most important for people to know about. Even me. You know, not that many people will stick their neck out and endorse what I'm doing. In fact, they don't. It's like, well, when is trying to be a guru, or when there he is, they're doing this again. And I'm really not. I, I mean... The, the, one of the points of doing this show is to share with you all how I became convinced. It took three years to convince me, shit, these guys are real. Oh my God, they really can do this stuff. They can really make these shifts. And all they need is people asking. And, you know, to have the courage to go out and do something like Whole Planet Healing and say, you know, it's, you know, there's one thing that was like, oh, maybe I should be a new age luminary <laughs> and, and, you know, write books about the Elohim. And I still may do that. And it would only be a, a, expand the service. But doing whole planet healing and watching this group of people shift, ordinary people, not sophisticated, some of them are sophisticated metaphysical people, but whoever comes into the group, the energy kind of moves with them. They become part of it, unless they don't want to be. It's amazing to watch. Um, you know, we, we are now approaching the 90 minute mark and I'm wondering if, if there's anything that you had wanted to share that you haven't had the opportunity to, to share. Well, you know, there's so much in my work that I have uncovered that I love sharing. It's so clarifying to people. And, but I don't think I should share it now, I can tell you, if you get into my work, you'll know, you'll learn that about six years ago, uh, I, I, well, I ended up making a big connection between Jesus and the rock. And of course, what could be more controversial than that? Except I've got all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And um, and it's an amazing, it all fits together like a, a puzzle. You know, there's a mystery of who Jesus was. And I've done talks on it in our group. And I've, and I've shared my research. And, um, and also channelings. Like, but I don't quote channelings to say believe in a channeling. But in this case, I'll say early on, I asked our sources through Daphne, I said, when Jesus said, Father, who answered him? And they said, as you would understand it, it would have been the rock group. And see, just to say that, it turns into, you know, very controversial. But this has nothing to do with whole planet healing, except the rock group is part of that. The Ra group is part of what holds the matrix for what's become known as the Christ consciousness. And they've been doing it since Je prior to Jesus, but Jesus was the anchor for that. It's all very interesting. Um, the Ra group is a group soul made up of graduates of this realm. Souls that graduated and went on to teach 
team up on the other side and then um, act as a huge conglomerate to impact this realm. They have done many interventions. And according to my research, Jesus was part of their interventions. They, won't even, they don't say that. They wouldn't say that. It's too controversial. They get themselves in deep doo-doo. I'm probably getting myself in deep doo-doo, too. Please don't make a lot of comments under this about when <laughs> the demonic, because you say the Ra group was part of Jesus. doesn't matter. Names are not important. The essence is what's important. The consciousness is what's important. Love is what's important. Anyone that inspires you to love each other is operating in the Christ energy. Did you know Jesus said that? They said, how will we know you are who they say you are? He said, know them, no, not because of the way they love me, but because of the way they love each other. Anything that inspires people to love each other is representing the Christ energy, whether they know it or not, okay? And, um, and I'm honored to say that on my calls, I see people loving each other. I see strangers helping each other. And it makes me believe when you're really doing it. This is the Christ energy. And I know it comes from the higher realms. And Jesus was an anchor. I mean, he said it. You know, he said, uh, it's the Father that does these things through me. Um, you don't know to, if you connect to the Christ energy, you do not know, need to know the details. You can go to church and it works for you. That's all you need. Don't bother yourself. I know plenty of people who are Christians that go to church to carry the Christ energy, and I wouldn't dare tell them anything about the stuff I do. But they get that I love them, and they get it. And so that's all I do. I love them. And um, it doesn't matter the specifics of what you believe. It matters anchoring yourself, learning how to hold these higher energies in your matrix. Because then, wherever you go, you are lifting the vibration. You become a catalyst for people to love each other. You know, Jesus said, these things I do, you can do too and much more. And I believe that's exactly what he meant, okay? That to hold the Christed energy, to hold the energy of the higher realms, and it just changes the energy in your space, and people start reacting differently to each other. Now, it's easier said than done. I mean, you could hear me say this and go off and say, I don't have a clue how to do that, okay? Well, what's happening on Whole Planet Healing is we're giving people clues every night because we're doing it. And I don't even have to be there. And the energy is still there. It's just you have to have the experience of it. So uh, remind all of us again how every day, every evening, we every can day. tune in and we can join in and we can access the Christ consciousness with the Ra group at Whole Planet Healing. At the Seven one two, seven seven zero, four three four zero. Seven one two, seven seven zero, four four one. Ah. Well, it's it's whole planet healing whole planet whole planet healing dot com whole planet at healing. seven at Stop. seven seven yeah. p.m. Pacific, right? Seven p.m. Pacific, right? And and and, and that's like have, a portal. That that's like a portal into Christ consciousness. That's pretty awesome. You know, it's like a church without a church, without a building, without a tithing, without money. You know, and uh, it brings in the energies over the phone lines. You know, when we first started doing this, Alfred, 
I had experienced bringing in the energies live. I had that experience. I could feel the energy in the room and whatever. And then we asked them, could we do this over a phone line? And they said, yes. Well, when we started doing it, and we started doing over BBS radio, we have three calls a week aside from Whole Planet Healing. Let's just start out with Whole Planet Healing, and then you'll, you'll have your own gravitation to the rest of the calls. But the Elohim was saying, well, how do, we're trying to wonder how to get their energies through the internet. <laughs> Or the phone wires. And eventually they said, no, that's not going to work. They said, we'll bring our energies in through each person that's listening. And that they could tune in and feel the people that were listening to the call, bring their energies in, and people would get expanded. They'd feel the energy in their chakras. When you, when you feel the Elohim, it doesn't feel like it's separate from you. It feels like it is a bigger part of you. Some of you are feeling it right now. You know, Alfred, are you feeling it? Yes, yes. I mean, obviously, because I really have, and I enjoy participating because I enjoy Christ consciousness. And, yes. You I know, mean, so that's... You start you start to feel, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but when I looked at you. Hey, don't, I, don't be sorry. I mean, I seek being in the spot and on the spot. <laughs> when I look at you, I can feel you're expanded. I can feel it. I mean, I may be wrong. I don't think so. But people who are used to seeing Alfred, look at his face now. You see that energy, the joy, the essence of his soul coming through? That is... He's tuning in to these energies. And um, I don't mean to put words in people's mouths, but that's how it looks to me. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, you know, uh, so it's there, it's here, it's now, it's what's happening. It's really what's sustaining the planet in an ever-expanding uh, uh, Christ consciousness on the positive timeline that we're in in this portal to 5D. And that's what's going on. And everything else is just phenomenology of, you know, blowing off uh, events as they transpire or are, uh, are, are perceived in the uh, reverberation through uh, frequency changes. And, you know, so that's what all this kerfuffle out there is about. But it's basically about frequency acceleration and light, light and life and love. And we're now entering the era of light and life on planet Earth. And that's it. And everyone listening is a pioneer, okay? We are pioneers in grounding this energy and all you, all you have to do is tune into it and you become a Johnny Appleseed. You walk around and you know you change the fear patterns. The or John Appleseed. Or John Appleseed. You right? have to be genderly gender wise inclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well I I, I really want to thank you. I want to commend you. Thank you, Ra Group. Thank you, Elohim. You're welcome here on Exopolitik TV at any time. Is there anything you'd like to leave our, us with at this time? Well, I am just very honored to have the opportunity to share this. And I am grateful to Alfred for having the guts <laughs> to put me on. <laughs> And let me talk about it. Hey, it's the easiest thing in the world. I mean, yeah. really. It's easy when it's easy. But for a lot of people, it's not so easy. And uh, I just hope, you know, I'm on Whole Planet Healing very often. And, in, you know, you don't have to identify yourself when you come on. You can stay anonymous. But when you identify yourself, 
it's even better because you put your energy in. So all you have to do is say, hey, this is Win from Sedona, and I get to talk to you, and other people get to talk to you, and you start to feel included in the group without any stipulations. You can come and go. There's no, no where have you been, and, and make it your own experiment to see, is this something that can lift me? I want to find out. Well, thank you. And thank everyone that uh, is participating in this. And because we have proven uh, uh, that healing energies can be transmitted in these, in, in these videos. And so we're all participating independently of time in a non-temporal, non-linear way in, in the energy transmission that is occurring now. So thank you. Thank you, Wynn. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you all who are out there and participating. And just blessings to every one of you, okay? Blessings. You are blessed. Everyone listening is part of the original prime creator, the one infinite creator. You're part of it. It's not a imagination it's not a game and when you start accessing that you're a creator in this realm and you change the world around you we'll see you later amen thank you